Physics experiments is one of the most important way how we can learn something new from the universe. But the question is, did humans already come up with the best experiments that we could think about? Or are there many experimental techniques out there that could be built, which are potentially too unintuitive for humans? The possibility of or the different combinations of experiments that one could theoretically build in a laboratory is just absolutely amazingly large. And this is where artificial intelligence comes in. How can we get new scientific understanding using artificial intelligence? When I started my group here at the Max Planck Institute, I've decided to choose the name Artificial Scientist Lab to force myself to think every day about what is actually the big goal. We want to know how to build an artificial scientist. When humans design experiments, they rely on their intuition. They rely on what they have seen in the past. Let me give an example in my own work. We wanted to build a new experiment. We failed. We couldn't find the experimental setup. And I thought maybe the human intuition is actually somehow in our way of finding the right way to build the experiment. So I wrote a computer program that basically just has experimental equipment that we have in the laboratory in its own virtual toolbox, and then it can uh, shuffle around experimental components and compute its results. So I started this algorithm and I came back in the morning and I actually saw exactly the solution that we as humans couldn't find for several months. The combination of experimental equipment, so it's definitely not that we could not have thought about it. The surprising thing is that the way how the machine assembled the components was highly asymmetric. It put in this unintuitive element, which we as a human just kind of couldn't grasp. Let's imagine the space of all possible experiments. Each tiny point in this diagram would be a different experiment. Humans have spent the last hundreds of years to find some of those points, for instance, by building better microscopes, better telescopes, better high energy physics experiments. We want to use artificial intelligence to find new experiments that we have not discovered yet. In my group, we have a number of different projects. Several of them are building new AI tools for designing new experiments. What we are using is scientific knowledge. This has all been published in papers and we use this and encode this in our algorithms. PyTOS is an algorithm that can design new quantum experiments. The underlying process of PyTOS, it goes a step away from quantum physics and goes to a much more abstract space that is built just of graphs. Graphs are mathematical constructions that have vertices and edges between vertices. We found in the last years that quantum experiment can be translated into this abstract graph. And this abstract world is way easier to handle. We can use modern AI tools. Then we can ask and answer questions in this much more abstract world. And then when we have a solution, we can translate the solution back into a real quantum experiment. We were interested in building a specific quantum state that is interesting for quantum computers. So entanglement is one of the strangest property that quantum physics predicts, where two particles seem to be correlated over large distances. The normal way how one creates entanglement is that you produce entangled particles at one location. They can be generated at completely different locations if you have the ability to do something extra called entanglement swapping. You generate two pairs of entanglement, they can be very far away. One of the two particles from each of the pairs you bring to one location and you perform a specific measurement. The partner particles have never been at the same location, but still they can be entangled. So we wanted to have our algorithm to come up with new ways to perform entanglement swapping. So one of the students was working on it and he has coded it up using PyToys. He got the first results. So I saw this result and I knew it shouldn't be possible. 
for creating entanglement swapping, the belief was that you actually need entanglement to start with. Our solution seemed to not need it. It turned out that the result is correct. So that means the limit that I thought needs to be there was wrong. There, there is no limit. You can overcome it. What did the machine find to overcome this limit? We found out that it uses a completely different technique using very different physical principles, but it's still able to entangle two particles that have never been at the same location. One of the reasons why we are excited about this technique is because it changes how we think about generating entanglement. We wrote a paper where we explained the idea that we understood from the computer algorithm. And the cool thing is, the idea came completely implicitly from a machine. And we as humans, we just try to understand what the machine has actually done. This is definitely a component of the future of science, that humans will not maybe discover all things, but maybe the machines discover, and humans have to interpret what the machine has done. A couple of years ago, I got an email from researchers at the LIGO collaboration. And the LIGO collaboration is the one collaboration that has built gravitational wave detectors and actually observed the gravitational waves. And they were thinking about whether one could design new gravitational wave detectors that are beyond human intuition. We are trying to use AI systems to come up with completely different experimental setups. Actually, quite a lot of the ideas that the machine has put in are completely alien to us. They are totally weird and we are not sure how to really think about them yet. Some of those designs seem to beat the best human designs, in some cases even quite significantly. Now, it's a task of the human to understand the solution that a non-human intelligence has provided. There are different projects in my group where we actually try to use a huge amount of scientific literature to predict what scientists will do and to hopefully suggest new, interesting, high-impact research ideas. We create something that's called a knowledge graph. This is a very compressed version of the knowledge that's contained in the papers. You see how scientists behaved in the past, so you can predict in a way, using modern machine learning methods, what scientists will do in the future. One of the most interesting things I can think of in the future is building algorithms that can basically simulate all of experimental physics. So your AI system has then not only access to all experimental equipment in a virtual way, but also do a huge number of open experimental physics questions. It's likely to find some very unorthodox solutions. So I think about this as one of the most exciting large-scale collaboration between the domain of physics and the domain of artificial intelligence. That would be a dream to have that.